This video showcases a beautiful young lady who has had braces in the past, but something was not right, despite her nice smile. One, she suffers from headaches and jaw joint trouble. Two, in order to make space for an overbite, two bicuspid teeth were extracted from the top, but none from the bottom. This created a space and alignment discrepancy. The upper jaw had all the extra space created by the amputation of the two bicuspids. Therefore, in order to close spaces, the tooth arc had been made smaller and the upper incisors had been retracted backwards. The bottom arch, however, which still had the full set of teeth and which always has to fit under the top arch, somehow had to be squeezed together at the expense of a set of bicuspids, which ran out of room and got trapped between the adjacent teeth. To treat her, we first had to address the jaw joint and the foundation. This is called the functional jaw orthopedics phase. An upper three-way expander was made to flare the upper incisors in order to release the lower jaw and give it some freedom of movement. The arch was only slightly expanded sideways. The lower jaw received an orthotic to recreate a bite position which was more open and forward. This was essential to release the tension in the jaw joint. She would have to function in this position in order to retrain her chewing and facial muscles. At the same time, we monitored her symptoms before embarking on braces. After a few months, and only if we noticed significant improvement in the jaw joint symptoms, we transitioned to braces. In her case, we used self-ligating ceramic brackets. During this transition, she was still wearing her lower orthotic, which had to be continuously adjusted as the upper teeth moved. At this stage, we discontinued all removable appliances. The upper expander was replaced by a semi-fixed Wilson expander. The jaw position was held in place by tripoding, which involves bonding a ramp behind the incisors, as well as building up the lower second molars to duplicate the same bite that she had when she wore the lower orthotic. After a few months, as the individual teeth started aligning, we opened up the spaces of the trapped lower bicuspids with small springs. As the space for the lower bicuspids opened up, we engaged the wire into their brackets and allowed them to settle in. One of her bicuspids on the top was rotated. We performed rotation mechanics using elastic as shown here. It's almost like grabbing someone from the arms and pulling in opposite directions to make them turn. At some point after the teeth aligned, we started one of my favorite procedures. In order to gain some of the lost space on the top arch short of opening up the complete spaces and inserting implants, we widened the space around the lateral incisors with special titanium springs. We then carried out some cosmetic bonding with composite. In planning this, we follow the golden proportion rules and make sure the addition is blended seamlessly to the tooth. This procedure enhances the smile and gives us an opportunity to utilize the surplus spaces we are left with after opening up the upper arch and flaring the incisors. The remaining spaces were closed utilizing various elastic techniques and the patient was soon finished. After the removal of the braces, the incisal ramp was left for a few more months to allow the teeth some room to settle in without losing vertical dimension. This also helps the jaw joint relate to a neutral position. A lower bonded lingual retainer will reassure us that there will be no relapse. With this in place, we did not need a lower retainer. The teeth will be free to settle into the bite. Our final photo shoot culminated the treatment. It is always nice to see the smiles and satisfaction on their faces and the feeling of mutual accomplishment as success always depends not only on the skills of the dentist but also on the cooperation and determination of the patient.